Hunter x Hunter episode 46. And you know he means that. About this, I was thinking, who does that sound like? Our other favorite enhancer. Except instead of I'm gonna punch him in the face, it's I'm gonna shout his face off. Or bite his face off? Are all enhancers just like obsessive maniacs? They're like the honey badgers of the Hunter Hunter world. Chasing X and X waiting. He has such a, a flair, a sense of flair. Sure, let's join forces with Hisoka. What could go wrong? I think Kurapika does it. I think Kurapika joins. Melody narrowly avoided death. Stabbed, left for dead. Convenient. Very interesting. My gut says never make a deal with someone like Hisoka. But as far as making deals with the devil go, it's pretty, pretty compelling. He's like that kind of honest evil that in some ways is even better than like dishonest good, if that makes sense. He doesn't care about you. He'll throw you under the bus if it's advantageous to him. He'll leave you when he no longer needs you. But like, you know all that, and he says all that, so you can plan. It's up to you if you think you can handle that, and if, if you can develop an edge there. That sounds like a yes. No need to put names on it. Change careers. Go into hiding. They deserve a, whatever they're being paid, they, they need more pay. I've quit for less. I'm the leader now. <laughs> I, I'm like waiting. I'm waiting for Gurupika to be the boss. You've been deceived. Yay, my, my merchandise is safe. Everything worked out. あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
Drinking the beer like water. This could be gone one day. <laughs> so, man, so bizarre. <laughs> like, why are they so likable? <laughs> why do I want to join the Phantom Troop? It seems fun. It just seems so much fun. It's got everything. It's got adventure. It's got drinking with friends. It's got friends. Highly social atmosphere. Lots of travel. Fraternal love. And then he flew there. Using the a gust from his toes. It's good that you figured that out when you did. One of the considerations I love most about this show in the recent episodes and arcs is the question of something like scales or hierarchy of different types of pursuit. They've spoken directly to the fact that, like, what is money to us? We've seen Gonin Kalua treat money like it's nothing. Esteem you could imagine being important, but esteem from whom, right? Like, you would want it to be esteem from people that you respect. But if you're among these people, it's a very small circle. What do you care about the opinions of non-Nen users? Nen being somewhat of a, a metaphor or substitute for greatness in life or something. So many of the major players in this arc are at that rung or chasing that rung of something way better than like the material, the earthly, the things that to most people probably seem like high aspirations, but quickly give way to a realization that there's so much more or there's a higher rung or level. But it leaves the question of what that is exactly. I know deeply what that is, but I can't articulate it. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about how experience is so closely tied to the proximity between one's idea of potential and one's current assessment of self. When those two lines cross, when you have that feeling that you're in exactly the right moment, doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time, pushing yourself probably a little bit beyond what you feel is but your, your potential, you end up in this state of like raw but very conscious experience. And it's absolutely thrilling. It's the best feeling that I know to be possible. It sounds crazy, but it, it feels something like you're slipping into this spiritual or energetic slipstream where you're going at max speed in a sense. If I had to guess, I'd say it's some kind of natural reward mechanism for hitting that target of your, your optimal self as a as a human being in the world, given sort of the, the universal realities as well as the universal values and laws. It'll differ person to person and moment to moment. And in fact, I think one of the issues with it is that if it is indeed about potential, once you are in that zone long enough, it sort of resets or raises your potential again. And so then you are left with like the new challenge of getting there again and so on and so forth. So there's no like perfect one size fits all prescription for how to get there. But I think it has something to do with following like the highest instinct, the highest calling and stripping away a lot of the resistance, you know, the things that are not this sense of playful joyfulness, emotional baggage, etc. I think it's no coincidence that a lot of the characters that seem to be there are like thrilled and have this sense of adventure, regardless of their levels of understanding morality and being in line with a, with a higher moral code. Ufugin just changes the game though, I mean, he could just destroy the hotel. She gave, he, gave the nod back to Melody, they understand each other. And we do what she wants. Speaking of leverage. Nope. Moving in does not know the meaning of slack. Damn, they've been hustling. Yeah, I totally missed that there were multiple auctions. This is a whole side of Lirio I wasn't expecting. Wow. While Kura Pika rises to gang leader, meanwhile, Leo, 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 God, Leorio rises to master level con man. Who are we rooting for again? Who are the good guys? It's like Avatar if we just got to enjoy the fun of the shell game and didn't have to hear complaining when we got back to the camp. There is a clear failure point in this plan, though. One Nen user or whatever could wipe you out if it's too early. Oh. 
This is the plan. There was no arm wrestling today. <laughs> Whoa, a little poker face there, Leo Leo. Leo's hunting for whales. Oh, it's the big leagues. <laughs> he says gleefully. Go on, my little honey badger. Get in there. <laughs> we were gonna make it up for that the terrible blunders during the hunter exam. Oh no, I just had a terrible sinking feeling in my stomach. I forgot in all this fun and commotion that Lirio does blunder. <laughs> <laughs> he does tend to blunder. Could this be his redemption? I mean, Gon's doing all the, the legwork, but Lyra is the mastermind. Oh, what? I was getting excited for this wrestling arm wrestling arc. Does everything have to be an auction? Damn, how many auctions do we need? Oh. Yeah, she was one of your opponents. Actually, it's even crazier to think back on that now that we know more about the Phantom Troop. The fact that Gon 1 is pretty amazing. Though I'm guessing her thing is not physical strength, but still. He's leaving out some very, very important details here. <laughs> I like how he just went to the, the absolute top, capturing all the Phantom Troop members. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Clue knows. Smart. Clever kid. Obviously. They're outsourcing the death to the public. You know it's serious when they cancel the underground arm wrestling event. And extremely powerful. Kurpika is a gang leader now. He's a little bit busy. Wow, Gon. That was very on the nose. Tell me Kurpik has a plan besides just confronting Uvagin one-on-one -on -one head-on. I mean, we got the chain, but Uvagin knows that. That's kind of what I'm saying, yeah. There, there's more to this. This is a match right here. <laughs> uh, you remember when I said I was worried for Kurapika? I'm very worried for Kurapika. Gon. Kalua. This again? <laughs> Why? He likes to fold. Oh, nice. That's actually interesting, interesting information. Good for him. I can't hate on him too much because he likes dogs. This show is giving me that feeling I love where it just makes me remember that the world is a playground. I don't think I'm ever going to become a mob boss like Kurapika or a con man king like Leorio. Though you never know. But just that feeling of you could look at it that way, if one could look at it that way. If you were in that slipstream, if you could get yourself into that slipstream, imagining the great things and feeling the joys, the pleasures of just going out in the world and playing around with it, using exactly what you are to its fullest capacity to engage with things out there to synthesize and harmonize events and things and relationships. The potential is unlimited. It's unreal. It's just very hard to get there. First of all, because we don't really see it that often. It's not really well explained as a goal or something to aim for. There are just a million thoughts and emotions and learned patterns and fears that, like in a very real sense, are not us. It's not one self. It's the building blocks one's true self leaned on and used as support when born into like a chaotic vacuum as a baby and child and adolescent and adult even. The physical representation I have for it in my mind is something like being a, a like a vessel or a vehicle, some kind of very thin jet that at its most refined and most aerodynamic could go at its fastest speed, yet is encumbered with things it's like picked up along the way. In a sense, it feels like a lot of the work is stripping things away, unlearning things. And that happens, I think, through a combination of experience because the world is also a headwind that kind of whittles you down naturally if you let it and like self-directed inner thought and effort. The show manages to capture and express that joy in, for me. We're in different territory than usual. It's not being a successful person in society. It's not money. It's not fame. It's not even like saving the 
world. They're not out to save anything. Saving the world could be that. It could be that pure slipstream. Like, for example, in My Hero Academia, Deku saving the world is a very similar thing because it's pure. But like saving the world, I think one of the appeals of it is the glory. But like, who, who cares about glory in light of like this purity, if that makes sense. It's, this is a very weird and abstract rant, but there, there's really something there that I, I feel tangibly from the characters, both the heroes, heroes, quote unquote, and the, the villains, quote unquote.